Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be seeing how we can integrate OAuth with a web app that has um, the API management service in um, as the API gateway. What do I mean? In the last video, we saw how we can use Postman to send a request to the API gateway from the API management service. And um, that API gateway is connected to a to a web API. So the the web API is in the back end, and we are using Postman as an application object that um, is being used to get tokens, and we are using that token to authorize um, Postman to be able to send a validated request to get the right response. So we add Postman, we add Web API, we add the API management service on our job. And we also have the, um, okay, so those are the three basic, um, if I were to draw an architecture for what we did last, um, in the last video, those three components will be what we make um, the most of it. In this video, what we want to do is a little bit different. So before our last video, when we were treating authentication on its own and we touched on OAuth, we saw how different web application can use OAuth to, um, to, to authorize themselves. So we built one application that was acting as the API and we built another application that was um, consuming data from it and we set up what to be able to um, run some validations around it. But this time around, the major difference about this video and what we've been doing in the past is that in the previous videos, we did not consider the API management service. But this time around, um, we are using the API management service as our endpoints. So the code is similar to what we have used before. So I think I should just start from my controller. I won't be going through all the codes because similar as I said earlier on, I will just be showing you the areas that we that you need to modify um, to be able to get it to work because I'll be making all the codes available um, in our GitHub um, account. So basically, you can see we have scope here, and this scope was gotten from um, our Azure accounts. So I'll show you where this was gotten. So when you go to expose an API, you see the link for this. Um, then another thing we have is, um, so you know that when you are using the API endpoint, I mean the um, API gateway from the API management service, you need to use, you need to add the subscription key. So we're adding the subscription key as an header here, just the same way it was added when we are using, um, when we are using um, Postman, the way we added it. So this time around we are using default request headers, blah, blah, blah. So we're also adding that. Then we are also adding the endpoint. So this is the API gateway URL. And you can see it's ajoyapi.net. So those are the two key portion of the controller that you need to replace um, the data. Then, um, so before I go to the index, Okay, for the app setting, let's just look at app setting. You can see, um, I know you are familiar with all these IDs, tenant, clients, blah, blah, blah. So all this, I created a, an application object that represented this application, that represent this application. And within the application object, you are going to see your tenant ID. You see the client ID, which is also the application ID. And the callback path is based on Microsoft documentation, you know, sign in OIDC, that's open ID connect, and sign out OIDC as well. And you also need to create a client secret. This client secret is created 
from the application object that you created for this application, not the application object for um for app manager, which is the one for the API management service, but the one for this application. Okay. So another thing that we did was we added identity to it because we wanted to add the sign in and sign out feature. And the easiest way to do that is to use scaffolding. So how did I go about it? All you need to do is just to come over here, you right click. I know you are familiar with this. Then you go to add, then you go to new scaffolded item. And that's basically what you need to do. And when you click on this, you go to identity, click on add, and you'll be good to go. Um, yeah. So that is that for this particular. Um, so I've spoken about the controller. So this is an MVC, it's a web app MVC. We have our models, we have our controllers, and we have our views. I'm coming to the views. So let's go over here. So when you add the identity, it automatically generates the this login partial. And um, the default login partial is a little bit more um, comprehensive than this. So I wanted to make it a lot simpler. That's why um, I use this code from um, one of my sample codes from one demo. It's very simple just for you to sign in and sign out. And it displays the name as well as um, the information. So in the layout, okay, so let me just start with views now. In the layout, what is important, what you need to remember to add is, um, where is it? Yeah, this is it. A link to this login partial. This partial. So you need to just add this, and you are good. Then, um, in the index, um, you need to reference this view bar content. And the reason is because um, you have it here. You are assigning content to this view bar content. So when it gets a response from this URL containing all our courses, um, it needs to be displayed on this coin. And we are sending it to view bag that's why we are having it here okay then um for our launch setting this is the url that is of interest to us this url we are going to use it in agile i would tell you where we are using it very soon when we go to the agile portal but one thing you would have observed is that over here you can see that our program.cs we have um we do not have a startup.cs and that's because this program was written in .net 8.0. So the initial code was actually in 3.1, but I try to use AI to combine both the startup and the program.cs and it resulted to just a single file. And this is the file. So this combines the startup. So instead of adding OWIN and adding a startup file, the better you just combine everything. And it's very easy to combine it. It's very semantic. It makes a lot of sense to do that. It gives your program, your project a better structure. So let me just go through the values that was replaced. So you can see our scope here, still the same scope that you saw in your controller. That you saw in your controller over here. Um, yeah, over here. So it's still the same. 
Yeah, then yeah, we are referencing um our upsetting the JSON. We are referencing this object that contains all the key variables. Yeah, so this is it. So I'll be going to our IGO portal now. I'll be going to our IGO portal very soon. So key things that I hope I've mentioned is how this program, what we are doing here differs from what we did in the last video and how it differs from what we've done around OAuth without the um, API management service. So the major difference is that now we are trying to integrate the API management service. Previously, we were not using an API management service. We are treating the web API as a web app, essentially. We are not using any management service. Okay. Um, so I've spoken about the app settings of JSON and how the credentials for our application objects for this web app is included there. I've spoken about the local setting of JSON. And I think, um, okay, so I think all this is good. So we can go to our job portal now. Let's go to our job portal. I'll still run it. I'll still run it. I just want you to see what is required to set it up. Here's my job portal. Just give me a moment. Okay, so I think you can see my job portal now. So this is the application object for our API management service. Even though I called it App Manager, it was a typo, but it's really for our API management service. And you can see where I got the scope URL from. So you just need to copy this. Come to expose an API and you get it from here. Okay. And this is the um the application object for the web app that we are building now. This web app that wants to connect to the web API through the API gateway, okay? And over here, when you come to authentication, you can see that I've added the redirect URL and this 518 was what I was showing you from the local settings of JSON. That's how I knew this port. And this forward slash sign in OIDC is the callback URL that was referenced in our App setting the JSON, and we also have our sign out URL as well. One key thing you need to do was that the first time I was creating adding a platform, I forgot to click on ID tokens, and it took me a while to figure out that that was where the error was coming from. So, oh, remember to um ensure the id tokens is clicked if not there will be no token that um would be that needs to be validated or registered okay so i think that is that for authentication so if you go to secret you see that i created a secret and this is the secret here so from where we saw then if you go to api permissions I added the permission here, and this permission is from the app manager. So that's why in this video, I will not be doing anything on the API management service because 
the application is not connecting directly to the API management service. We're only using the, the URL. It's only, there's only a connection between the application object and the, the application object for the web app and the application object for the API management service. So it's not like the, um, there's a direct link, there's a direct connection. So um, all we just need to do is to link up to this application object. Is this application object that is securely connected to the API management service. So if I should go to Apple's, okay, suppose an API. Um, okay, so we are going to look at Apple's and suppose an API for the app manager. I already covered this in the last video, but um, let's just see it again. So Apple's, you can see where I added this rule that is being used over here in API permissions. And remember it is delegated. Okay, so that's basically it. That's basically the key things you need to take note of. Um, I think we are good. So what I'll do next is, let me just see the key things I want to discuss. I hope I've covered everything. Um, I think I have. Okay, so we can run it, we can run it. So let me go back to the application and I would run the application. I hope I logged out the last time I logged in because caching, I added in memory caching and that can be really stressful when you do not log out. Yeah, so I'm running it now. I'll be sharing, let me go to my Okay, you can see it's running. Yeah, so you can see the contents from our um from our API gateway. You can see the results. Um, this is the content bag that was added, and you can see it over here. Um, so this is being displayed securely. So there's what there's subscription key. So there are different layers of security before um, access was granted to my web app to be able to display contents of that of our API. So there's the subscription key that was included. There's the OAuth token exchange, token IDs. Um, there is um, white listing, the local host um, ports, and so many others. The application object, the interlinking, and it's really so much is happening behind this scene. It might look very um, simple, but behind the scene, a lot are really happening. It's really happening. Okay, so I think this is a good place to end our API management service series. It's been an eventful one. I hope you've learned one or two things. Let me log out. So I hope you've learned one or two things. And I hope what we achieved in this video is clear. So what we did in this video for emphasis sake is that we have an API. We are the web API. But this API is being managed by an API management service known, known as Azure API management service. So this 
API, this web API that we have that is hosted on Azure um, cannot be accessed directly. It must only, it can only be accessed through the API gateway of Azure API service because we've used policies to prevent a direct access to it. Okay. We use network rules, network rules rather not policies, not policies. So that is that for the API. Now we now have another application, a web application. So this is not an API now. This is a normal web application, a .NET web application. This .NET web application wants to connect to that our API that has been managed by the API management service and is only accessible through the API gateway. Now, um, that web app, um, the way we want to access, the way the web app wants to access the API is not um, through direct authentication or just username and password. It wants to access it securely using OAuth. So the API is not open to just anybody. It's only accessible through um, OAuth. Only people that are authorized have access to it. So that is why we've done so many configuration around setting up OAuth. So that's basically the summary of what we've been doing. Okay, so if you find this video helpful, don't hesitate to share, like, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.